Immediately after the match, I, I asked you if the season is a, a, a success, and you said you know emotions are still kind of raw. It was hard to, to tell. Now, do you have a, a better picture of, of where it, where it stands? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, first, I'd like to just apologize to everyone here and those that aren't here. I know that we kind of have made this decision to do this at the last minute. We only gave you a, a day warning, um, but just with the, the the different things that have been going on around here, we we had to put this together quickly. So. Um, Yes, the season was a success. Um, you know, I think when you go through and look at, um, there's a number of, I, I think, accolades and accomplishments. Uh, first, getting through the Champions League for the first time was big. Going 20 games unbeaten. Um, you know, being one of the top attacking teams and top entertaining teams for our fans, being great at home, setting a record for home wins, uh, you know, winning the East again. Uh, and then, you know, when you go, when you think about the seasons that guys like Brad and Sasha and Luis had again and and, and the goals that, that Brad's been able to set, uh, the, the record that Luis has been able to set in terms of consecutive games, um, you know, and, and for me, I would, at the end of all of that, I think that's all a result of a foundation of a certain kind of environment that's been created here that uh, I think has set the tone for what this organization has become. And, I, and for me, uh, obviously, the results always speak the loudest. And, and we wanted to really win the cup this year because we felt that that was the true way to honor the success and accomplishments of what's been accomplished uh, or what's been done, the work that's been done on the inside. But <clears throat> still, I think there's enough results in our favor to say that what's being created here, what's being built, the identity of this club, the identity of this team, uh, the foundation of, of what a real club should be about. I think a vi having a true vision, I think we're unique in that way. And, and I think our fans have gravitated towards that and, and trust it and believe in it. So um, I think the, the disappointment for not getting the cup is widespread throughout this community. Um, but... Uh, it's important to also really take a moment to appreciate uh, everything that's been achieved. And, and I'll just piggyback on Jesse. I mean, um, you know, there's a lot to be proud of uh, in terms of what's happened this year. When you look at some of our guys that we brought in from our academy, um, you look at what's been happening at the USL and you look at what we were able to accomplish, you know, with the first team, there's a lot to be proud of. Um, at the end of the day, I think that, you know, we're all disappointed we, we, we weren't able to deliver an MLS Cup uh, to the fans and to the community. Um, but we'll be right back at it in terms of uh, this team. We, we have a good team. Um, we're going to be better. Uh, and we've got to go in the offseason and, and, and figure this thing out so that at the end of the day, we, we can deliver an MLS Cup to this club. Jesse, just to piggyback on what Ali said, um, how many players on the USL team are threatening jobs on the MLS roster right now? Because obviously we know about Derek Etienne Jr., Brandon Allen. I think we've seen them like Aaron Long has gotten a shot. Who in your mind is threatening the MLS roster right now? Well, as a, as a starting point, that's going to be uh, a big challenge, I think, but an exciting challenge for us to, to retool this team is we know that we have uh, a really good feeder system right now, a really good USL team, and some really talented young players who are chomping at the bit to, to prove themselves on a bigger stage. I mean, when you go through this season, uh, you know, if you were to just talk about um, Brandon Allen, I think was one of the best attacking players in the USL. Uh, so, you know, having him back and now, you know, having him challenge himself to, at, with the first team to, to gain more minutes and to prove himself at a higher level. But we think that Brandon's done really well this year. I think Derek had a great year and, and built upon his USL performances from two years ago till now and has shown that he's in many ways ready to push to, to see if he can give first team minutes. Aaron Long being defender of the year, the best defender in that league in many, in many games, the best player that I saw in that league. I think he's going to now continue to, to push to establish himself with the first group. Ryan Mira had an incredible season. I think he was the best goalie in that league, even though he wasn't given that award. I think he proved to be the best goalie in that league and helped win a championship there. Tyler Adams, I think, uh, has shown that as for as young as he is, that he's ready for big challenges and big responsibilities. Um, you know, Sean Davis has already started to establish himself. You know, and then there's guys on the USL team. Um, I'm just trying to think, did I forget any of our kind of guys? 
Well, I anyway, mean, you, you, know. you know, but but then I think Florian Valo <coughs> and Vincent Biscourt had great seasons, right? And they they've shown that that uh, that they can handle that they're very good attacking players in that league. That they're smart, they're creative, they fit the way we play. Um, Stefano Bonomo still, I thought, you know, even though he was injured a, a lot this year, I think he has certain qualities that fit with what we do. Justin Billu, when he played, if, you know, at left back, he showed some real special qualities. So, you know, I mean. That's sort of a, a laundry list for you. But that, I think, the reason why I, I mentioned so many names is because we think very highly of a lot of the players down there. And so now when we're looking to retool this thing and, and now push it for next year, there's obviously a lot of very established players on our team that we think are of very high quality. But the challenge will be, what is the balance for next year? And how do we keep hunger and drive and youth and continue to invest in everything that we've done here uh, from not just a first team perspective? Is that good? Yeah. That was a lot. We covered it. Franco. For, for, it's a special group. Yeah, it's I mean, that, the USL, uh, it's a very special group. And, and John Walniak did a great job w uh, with that team. And so, you know, he's got some talented players. Um, they, they play a nice style of, of soccer in terms of the way we want to play. So it, it's, it's a good group, and it's, it's good for the MLS team. Uh, for both of you, I'm just curious to hear your, your thoughts. Uh, this, you talked about the success the, the team's had uh, these last couple of years. But before you got here, the team made the conference finals, made the conference semifinals mm -hmm. the year before that. What, what does this team need, this group of players need, to get over the hump finally and give this fan base uh, what, what it's looking for? Yeah, I, I mean, if you were to really dig into this last playoff series, which obviously we have, the frustration is that we – and everything we've done, it's been to try to prepare this team and this group to be successful, not in the regular season, but in the playoffs. So to come up as short as we did is very disappointing. Um, and yeah, that's what we're trying to ask ourselves is what is that? that we need, you know? And I mean, listen, maybe you could say that's what this organization's been asking for 21 years. But I think we know we have a lot of the pieces in place to now, and, and a philosophy and, and a, a, a group that has what it takes. But trying to understand, you know, I mean, listen, if you go back through MLS, sometimes it's a team being hot at the right time. Sometimes it's uh, having big players make big plays at the right time. We had two MVP candidates this year, right? So we think we have the types of big time players to make big plays. We won our last four games, I think, going into the playoffs, and we were 20 unbeaten, so we thought we had momentum. And to have it derailed in two games and to lose twice in the playoffs, it's it's almost unfathomable and un, like it doesn't make sense. It's, it's uncomprehendable, but we have to now, I think, take certain lessons and then figure out how to how to add to this in a way so that it 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 it's more prepared even than it was this year. But it's hard to imagine by key indicators how to be better going into the playoffs than we were this year. And, and, then, it, and then in that sense, it's hard to put your finger on why we came up short. I mean, and we'll, we've, we've done it over the last couple of days. We'll continue to do it. Um, you, you guys are aware of all the different uh, mechanisms in, in the offseason and added layer of complexity with the expansion draft on, on the 13th of December. Um, but we'll perform an autopsy on what worked and what, di what, what didn't. And we'll look at the roster and, you know, we'll, we'll make changes. So, um, you know, yeah, there'll be changes. Uh, pick, piggybacking off the roster changes, uh, I want to bring up uh, Gonzalo Verón and um, Omer Damari, th and the two of the three DPs that you have didn't seem whether it was due to injury or due to you know um, cards didn't seem to get into the flow of things. What's your assessment of their time in, at Red Bulls? Well, um, you know, Omer came late. You know, he came uh, towards the close of, uh, of the summer transfer window. And um, he's a player that's played with Leipzig and Salzburg. And um, we knew that bringing Omer in, he had an understanding of the way in which we wanted to play. And so when you're acquiring a guy mid-season, um, that would be an opportunity for him to integrate himself really, really quickly and for him to help us. Um, and he did that. You know, you saw uh, what, he, what he helped us out uh, with the Champions League and in some of those matches, and he did really well. Unfortunately, he got injured. Um, and then he never really got himself going in such a way where 
you know, this guy's firing on all, on all cylinders and really helping the club as a designated player. Um, his loan uh, was just to the end of the year, and so he'll return back to his club. Um, you know, with Verone, uh, you know, Verone is is he's he's done well, but he's he's struggled at times. Um, uh, and we'll we'll sit down with with Gonzalo and we'll talk to him and figure things out. Um, but I did see, you know, towards the towards the end of the season, you saw him having some really good performances. He had a great performance against the Galaxy in in Los Angeles. He probably could have drew another PK. And then you saw towards the end of the season, even though he wasn't a regular and he wasn't a starter, every time he was getting in there, he was creating chances and finding opportunities. He's created the PK in the, in the last game against Montreal. So, you know, how can we figure out a way in which um, he can support the team and we can support him such that, you know, it's a win-win situation. We're adding value on all sides of the equation. So, um, yeah, with Verone, we got to look at his performances, look at his season, sit down with him, cut the tape up, and hopefully he'll add value for us and, and really help us out next year. I'll, I'll speak to Gonzalo as well. You know, I, I, I continue to be very optimistic on Gonzalo. And I think we've seen improvement, and he's still a young player. And, you know, I think I'm, I'm still excited about the possibility of what next year can look like. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I think different people have now been critical of my decisions on how to use them and when to use them and everything else, which that, that's fine. I understand that's part of the job. But um, what's important is that players in our team understand their roles and then understand how to grow within that. And I think Gonzalo's I, notion of who we are and how to be successful here has has grown exponentially as time has gone on. And I think it's only a matter of time before he really now uh, starts to show everything that he's about. I guess for both of you, uh, last year, a lot of continuity from, from the, the previous season. Only really Matt Miazga was the big piece that left. Do you envision something similar? Do you think that attributed to your success this season? And do you see more of a shakeup this season than you did uh, in previous years? We do believe that there, you know, that, you know, continuity or consistency, however you want to call it, um, is correlated to success. I think having a group of of people, staff, and players that have spent time with each other, have been in the trenches with each other, that's a good thing, and that leads to success. Um, at the same time, we've got a lot of talented young players, um, which is really exciting. Um, you saw when Dax went down, Sean Davis filled in, and he did an excellent job. And so, you know, we've got the challenge and the opportunity of how do we stay consistent? How do we give some of our younger players who are probably ready, give them time, uh, and then just making smart, educated decisions going into the, the off season. You know, I, I speak to a lot of GMs and sporting directors around the league, and you know, our players had good seasons. You know, we've got we've got a lot of quality players, and so going into the expansion draft, going into the reentry draft, going in with free agency in the waiver draft, how can we be? Uh, calculated and measured about every decision we make with regard to the roster um, uh, is a big emphasis. Um, so we'll have to look at it. We'll have to look at you know what's out there, what the market bears, what players are available uh, within MLS. We've got some targets outside of MLS. Uh, and then we just do the best job we can to make smart decisions. The good thing is we've got a good base. We have a good team. Um, so can we make one or two uh, key moves that will really help the team uh, for next year? You know, for, for me and Ali, you know, we working together, we didn't anticipate the season to end now. And it's still filled with a lot of, I think, gut-wrenching emotion and disappointment. And so we're trying to take some time to, to so that we, I think, really think clearly about what decisions need to be made. But I think regardless, this this team and this club is positioned for success moving forward, which uh, I, I don't just think for next year, but I think for years to come. And and our goal when we came here, I think, was to try to build a foundation that was uh, independent of Ali or myself, and to just now know that there was an identity and a, and a way and an environment that would lead toward this club getting stronger and stronger year in and year out. And, and I feel like in that respect, the, the, it's been a big success, been a big success the last two years. And, I, and, and I, what Jesse said is really important in that we didn't win MLS Cup, but what you don't want to do is start making um, decisions that are based in emotion. And so how can we take a couple days, take a week, take a step back, 
um, figure this thing out and, and make some smart, measured decisions because we got a really good group of staff and we've got a really good group of players. Well, one question for each of you, and I'll start with Ali first since we're on, on, the, on the subject. Uh, Obviously, every MLS offseason with bonuses and everything that kicks in, especially when you have a good season uh, and, and we have the expansion draft, you always lose uh, a key piece or two, part of the core. Uh, do you expect that to happen uh, this offseason? Do you expect to lose a core player or two uh, this this winter? And, and for, for Jesse, uh, just going off of Barone, kind of related, you, you went with a 4 Two, two, two at the start of the year, and, and then got away from that when he got hurt. Uh, do you envision a, maybe a formation change? I know it's early, but do you envision maybe? Uh, are you open to going switching the formation and going away from what's worked these these past couple of years? So I, I think we probably, and I think most folks would would, would are we have the deepest team in, in the league um, uh, from a from a talent roster and a depth perspective, and so um, you know the expansion draft only allows you to protect uh, eleven players. Um, except those homegrown players that are on your supplemental roster, they're automatically protected. So I anticipate that we'll likely lose a player. So um, that's something that, um, while unfortunate, it's, it's, it's part of the universe that we live in. Um, but even still, we've got a, a quality group of guys. Um, we'll be OK. Um, you know, it's something that I've been thinking about uh, quite a bit, especially in the back half of, of, the, of the year. Um, and again, I just want to take a step back uh, and be measured about you know, who we're protecting, who we're not protecting, all those different types of decisions that have domino effect. To Jesse's point, you know, I didn't anticipate that we would be out of the playoffs at this point. Um, uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think the, one of the, you know, the goals has been, always as a manager, you're trying to build on you know everything that has been established and make it better and stronger and more tactically is part of that so even with the attempt to think about going to two strikers we knew that having flexibility in the way we played would would keep our uh keep teams off balance you know I, we didn't probably use it as much as i would have thought at the beginning of this year uh but we did use it at times and we benefited from putting playing two strikers at times uh now um you know, when we are building, when whenever we're building this team, we're, we have a vision as to how we want to play, and then we're trying to add pieces into it that we think are are going to fit that and strengthen what we have. So, I think that additions that we make will be will be about uh, complementing our style and our roster the right way. And also, I think we're also trying to always have flexibility with how we use guys. That can also be said for the three or five in the back. And, and at times this year, that didn't go as well as we would have liked. But we're constantly trying to build more more tactics into what we do, along with the mentality and and everything else that we do. So um, now saying that for next year, I, you know, I, I think Gonzalo has developed an understanding of how to play with two, but also how to play as the lone striker and how to play in wide in the three, which is a benefit to him and us. So it's just about trying to figure out how to help him continue to establish himself at bigger levels. And, and then what I would just also, you know, there's the disappointment and the agony of defeat with the, the, the playoffs. Um, but there's a lot to be excited about for next year. Um, we have a good team. Um, we're going to play good soccer next year. We're going to have a good team. Um, so we're excited about, you know, we mentioned the expansion draft, the re-entry draft, and the free agency. For us, those are they're opportunities. Um, there are opportunities to strengthen the team. There are opportunities to uh, to reflect on our season. Um, but there's a lot of um, – we have a lot of excitement uh, about this team for next year. It's tough because of the loss, but we're still pretty ex – we're still very, very excited. Guys, we have time for two more questions. We'll go to Dan and then Eric. Next year will be the earliest this club is going to start in its history because of the CONCACAF Champions League quarterfinals. You're taking on Vancouver Whitecaps. What – Will you guys do besides the the, um, the preseason tournament in Tucson, Arizona? Will you be setting up other matches, like maybe going South America, Central America, Mexico? Where will, we, will you be doing to prepare for the quarterfinals and hopefully go deep into the knockout stage? You want me to take that? Yeah. Go. Okay. Uh, first of all, you know we'll we'll um, put a very uh, uh, Difficult off-season program for our players that that I think prepares them to be fit the moment that they step into training. Uh, we're going to Tucson twice, 
So, and there'll be a lot of MLS competition down there, and we're playing games almost right away, anticipating that our team will be fit enough to jump right into that, um, and now accelerate our, our our readiness for the season to start. Um, that presents a lot of big challenges, but we have that's been on our minds from the moment that we qualified for for the quarterfinals. Uh, the only the only variable there was trying to wait to see who our opponent was going to be. The fact that it's an MLS opponent. Opponent, I think is a benefit to us and and I think Vancouver would say the same thing because we'll be on the same uh, preparation schedule which I think gives us the best chance to have an even playing f field from a sharpness and fitness perspective for 90 minutes uh, now you know that tournament will be another big challenge so we step out of failing in a in a knockout stage for for playoffs and stepping right into another one so the key will be to take all the lessons from this year and and certainly from these last two games and now show that we can apply it to, to what that tournament is. And, and if we can learn from that and, and, and put good performances on, then we give ourselves up from the beginning of the year to be in, the, be in some really big games, which is exciting. For both of you two, um, last season, uh, speaking with Tyler Adams, Sean Davis, both of them went to Red Bull Salzburg, Red Bull Leipzig to, to do some training. Uh, do you think that benefited them? Is that something you're going to try to utilize again this year to, to try to get some more players up to speed, maybe utilize Red Bull Global more as you've done this season? Yeah, it's, it's certainly uh, in the conversation. So we, we even talked about it this morning. Um, I communicated with um, some of the folks over in, in Leipzig and Salzburg actually about an hour or two ago about potentially some of our players going over there and getting a training opportunities. We just got to make sure, um, work with those teams and those guys to figure out uh, when's the best time. Um, but I certainly believe that, you know, going over in the offseason and getting some training opportunities with a, in a different environment with some international competition uh, benefits you not just from a playing perspective, but from a confidence perspective. Um, so it's something that we're exploring. We just got to figure out who and when. Thanks, yeah, I Henry. mean, the last thing I'll say is, you know, this, there's not as many people in this room as there normally are. And there's usually a lot more people that I would be thanking. But... You know, you guys have been incredibly fair to me and Ali and to this team, and I think uh, you guys have uh, treated us well. I think shown, an, uh, you know, in, a, in an objective way, shown an appreciation for what we're trying to achieve, and and then tried to translate it in a way that I think people can truly get to know who we are and what we're about. And that's been a big key to I think everybody understanding what we're trying to build here. So appreciate you guys being fair and and and, and helping us out and, and hope to have a continued good relationship in the future.